concentration is all about focusing in and being in the present moment, which I'm sure at this point you're hearing that and it's sounding like cliche to you at this point because we all hear that. We all hear you got to live in the moment. You got to be present and this and that. However, the present moment is the only thing that truly exists. It is the thing that we can respond to. We can respond to right now. We can't respond to the past, can't respond to the future, but we can respond to right now. And there's a Zen story that I like to tell whenever I'm teaching any kind of meditation or uh, this particular aggregate of the Eightfold Path, which is the story that is called Wash Your Bowl. Now, the way that the story goes is there was a monk who was traveling around to different monasteries trying to learn from the best Zen master that he could possibly find. So he's going from temple to temple. He's basically doing what Seneca was saying in the, in the previous quote earlier in this episode not to do, right? Trying to go from place to place. And he goes to one temple and they're all eating. So he sits down, he eats, and he runs over to the master and he says, Master, please teach me. And he goes, have you eaten your rice? And the monk says, yes, yes, I've eaten my rice. I finished it. And he goes, then wash your bowl. And suddenly in that moment, the monk is enlightened. Now, it seems like a pretty simple story. However, what it's pointing to is this idea of following through on what you're doing now in the present moment, not trying to live out in some future. The reason why this is important is because if we're going to concentrate and focus, a big part of it is living a life of sincerity. If we're living a life of sincerity, if we're moving with that sense of sincerity and not necessarily doing what we think we're supposed to do, as we have alluded to in a previous episode here, it's going to be much easier to actually focus on one thing at a time, to be in the moment, to do what you're doing. And then that story, what's important about it is the monk had not necessarily finished the process of eating, right? He had eaten, but he hadn't finished the process of eating and washing the bowl, which is something that the monks would do every time that they ate. Now, the reason why that's important is because if we're just jumping from thing to thing, leaving things unfinished in our lives, le consistently leaving open loops because we're trying to jump to the next thing all the time, that is what's going to prevent us from being able to be here and now. Is we're being expedient, we're trying to jump from thing to thing, we're not practicing a meditative state. And the meditative state and meditative activity is simply being able to find that, that zone of flow. And that zone of flow comes with a few things. Number one is it, it comes with doing something that you genuinely want to be doing. If we're doing things that we're doing out of obligation, it's going to greatly diminish our ability to actually concentrate. And what it's going to tempt us to is saying, well, I'm doing this out of obligation because it's going to get me this thing. And then you insert the outcome, the attached outcome there. And when we get into that habit, we start to lose the process. We start to violate our integral effort. We start to dissociate and resist our emotions because they're just in the way. And again, if we're feeling unpleasant feelings when we're doing something that we feel obligated to do rather than something we sincerely feel to do, it's probably signaling us that maybe this is not something we should be doing for ourselves from a genuine perspective. Now, of course, that's a very vague and general way to say it. Obviously, there are responsibilities in life that we don't always like but are very important because other people are involved. That's not what I'm talking about here. <laughs> I'm speaking about doing things because we're attached to the outcome because we feel like we're supposed to do it because we feel like we're supposed to work this specific job or we're supposed to go to school and get a degree in this specific major and not in the one that we, we want to be getting just so that we can live a life that everybody tells us is the right way to live because, you know, we have the specific house or the car or the money or we're able to take the trips. That way of life is not a meditative state. That's going to make us keep jumping from place to place without actually focusing on what's truly important in, in our lives. And one book that really describes this very well is the book Essentialism. And to focus on what is truly important to you and what is most meaningful in your life. And by doing that, it creates a natural meditative state on what it is that we're actually doing, what, what it is that we're actually focusing on. And creating that natural meditative state is effortless when we're focusing on what is actually essential to us. 
if we're focusing on things that is that are not genuinely essential to us but instead something that we feel like we're supposed to like or we're supposed to strive for then we're always going to meet with distraction and not be able to have a meditative or present state on what it is that we're trying to create in our lives so with that being said the easiest way to actually practice integral concentration is to first and foremost check in with your intentions and ensure to yourself that they are sincere, that you want to do the thing that you're about to do or say the thing that you're about to say simply because you want to and for no other reason. You can bring in justifications and all that afterwards, but if the first reason is not because, is not just because I want to do this because this is what, what I want to do with my time here, then we're always going to meet with distraction. We're going to meet with complications. We're going to meet with things that seem to be in our way. And it's going to be very, very tempting to resist our emotions, to not allow ourselves to feel them. And when we don't feel them, we create all kinds of emotional friction and we create unnecessary and excessive suffering for ourselves by not having that awareness. 